And Kenya has unveiled an unprecedented tourism incentive package, which includes visa and charter fees waivers in a bid to attract world travelers back to the country. Now, President Uhuru Kenyatta, while opening Kenya's first luxury yachting marina, waived visa fees for children under 16 and VAT charges on national park fees. The park fees, which will now be capped at $60, down from $90, in an effort to revive the sector seriously battered after recent terrorist attacks. The president extended the period of an ongoing charter incentive scheme to 2018. Now, the scheme waives landing fees at Mombasa and Malindi airports for all charter aircraft and provides a $30 rebate for all disembarking tourists. The U.S., French and British governments have since withdrawn travel advisories imposed on Kenya. And of course, the countries are primary markets for the Kenya's tourism sector. We continue to invest heavily in infrastructure, in the knowledge that quality infrastructure is critical to social economic transformation that we all seek to achieve in this country. We recently launched the construction of the Port Reeds Mombasa Road, coming from the airport. Equally, we are intensifying efforts to get the Dongukundu bypass um, agreements done so that we can start that construction which I believe will allow our tourists and also our locals the pleasure of getting down from the mainland to the south coast. We are also working the um, agreement so that we can begin expanding the Malindi airport and I think that will facilitate the arrival directly into Malindi of international visitors.